This holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday. With MailChimp, you get a whole lot more than a URL. You get an all-in-one marketing platform to help drive sales. That means you can connect your data to make more informed, smarter decisions. And you get powerful automation tools like our customer journey builder to ensure you never miss an opportunity to turn shoppers into loyal customers. So if you're ready to integrate your marketing and boost sales, get started today at MailChimp.com slash smart marketing. MailChimp, built for growing businesses. That long day behind you, good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk of the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk of the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk. The tavern, music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk. Of the tavern, the song's over. Here we come. Welcome to the tavern. We'll get to the topic and discussion in just a moment. Just want to let everybody know this is an adult show with adult topics, adult humor, and in other words, uh, we drink, we smoke, we swear, and we laugh at things we probably shouldn't, but we do it together. For those listening to the podcast, we record the podcast on our live stream at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk and have a live interactive chat audience. You might hear the sound of the bell, and that means I want to interrupt somebody to read a question or comment. For those on the live stream, we won't read off everything you put in chat, but we'll try to get to the most relevant or the most amusing, but hopefully some combination of the both. Now, while we introduce ourselves, go ahead and let us know what your vices are tonight. Okay, and I'll introduce myself first. I am Travis Simard, author of incredible books, which had a great book launch, Silver and Smith and the Doppelgangers Gate, part of the Silver and Smith Chronicles. That just came out July 1st, and uh, I really encourage everybody to check it out. I feel like it was a turning point in my writing, and I had fun with it, and I've got some great feedback from readers. So check that out. My vice is tonight, I have a CAO Amazonia Brasilia, so a big fat stogie is what that boils down to. And I am drinking 10 cup rye tonight, which is a 90 proof rye mountain whiskey. So, and it comes with this really cool little cup right on top. I haven't used it, but it's there. Um, now we have a first time co-host here on the tavern that we're going to pressure into doing the next introduction for herself crystal wood would you tell them a little bit about yourself and your vices please yes you would Air pressure i am crystal wood i'm an author and a youtuber you can find me at writing happy hour on youtube um where i get my favorite authors drunk and ask them questions sweet um, I am smoking some red gummy bear hookah and drinking a rum and coke. Red gummy bear hookah. Mm. What kind of rum, by the way? Cayman something. Like like the alligator <laughs> or the island? Um, yes. Either. <laughs> and Ed? It's pretty good. Whatever it is, it's my husband's and it's delicious. So thanks, honey. Well done. <laughs> Ed? I'm Ed. Um, I didn't author shit. Um, I'm just here to drink wine and talk and drink more wine. And tonight I'm drinking a Miomi Rosé. What about your YouTube channel? Yeah, it's there. <laughs> it ain't got no new shit on it, though. <laughs> okay, for all our chatters, for those that throw their, threw their vices up, Word of Win is having Tulsi... Rubius chai and drinking it cold, cold tea. Nobody else said shit, so we will move on from that. Hey, let's do a quote. Now we're gonna do two quotes. First of all, our topic tonight is polyamory or slash alternative lifestyle. We'll yeah, see is. what direction we go in. 
Cogsley's quote tonight is... This is actually a good quote. It's not the daily increase, but daily decrease. Hack away at the unessential. A quote from Bruce Lee. Yeah, trim the fat, folks. Makes a difference in your life. Um, now, a quote from us. Uh, here's to love and enjoying life. Really, the most important thing when you're done with life. Here's to that. Here's to that. There we go. I, I was just waiting for everybody to raise their glass. Okay, so tonight's topic, polyamory. For anybody who doesn't know the definition of that, I'll loosely define it. Everybody else can jump in and throw in their two cents, expand on it, tell me I'm full of shit, whatever. Polyamory is basically having a relationship, generally a romantic and or sexual relationship, with more than one person at a time. Good basic definition, Amy? We good with that? Cool. Yeah. I can okay. get into that. Yeah. Um, and we all have some opinions and or experience with this. So we're going to talk about this tonight. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and start that way. Uh, and I'm doing this more so for Crystal. So Crystal can kind of get used to the tavern and the flow. Um, I myself have explored polyamory and found it's just not for me. It's I'm wired monogamous. Um, and I'm very comfortable with that. But I'm also very comfortable with other people. <laughs> Where to win? That is a great question. <laughs> Werdewin asks, has nothing to do with parrots or crackers? <laughs> well, as for the crackers part, it depends who you're in a relationship with because you could be in a relationship with a cracker. Mm -hmm. Do not have a sexual relationship with mm -hmm. a parrot. They explode. True story. And just whoop, whoop. Anyhow. <laughs> and they pinch. You know this how? Um, I don't. Moving on. Um, where was I? Right. <clears throat> So I, I explored it. I looked into it because I've, I've had offers in the past. And I went, hmm, nah, not, not for me. And I have seen good and bad polyamorous relationships. Now, here's what I'll say about the bad ones without going into details, which I probably will at some point in the next hour or so. The bad ones are not bad because it's polyamory. The bad ones are bad because the people are unhealthy people in the way they build a relationship. Mm. And I'll get more into that soon. Ed, do you want to jump in, throw your two cents in, then we'll pass it to Crystal, then we'll just mix it up and talk shit all night. Yeah, I, I've seen, I, I've known friends um, that were polyamorous, and, and like you said, good ones and bad ones. Um, I've seen marriages break up because of it, and I've seen relationships go for a very, very long time. Uh, so, yeah, there are good ones, bad ones. I, I think some people have gone into it not really understanding. Sorry to interrupt. No. We have a comment that's relevant. <laughs> Jewel throws in, duct tape keeps the parrots from exploding. Go on, Ed. <laughs> I mean, I will follow that. Really, I don't. <laughs> I'm waiting out of the parrot thing. <laughs> my Polly wants a cracker, so. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's, uh, since I have known Ed, he has always enjoyed crackers. Let me just say. Um. Parrot tape is even better than duct tape. <laughs> well, I don't think we need to split feathers on the ethnic background of the fowl. <laughs> I think it's meant more as a broad spectrum, usable amongst all fowl, water or otherwise. <laughs> Ed, you were saying you've seen good and bad? You've seen it break relationships and do what else? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Like you said, good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I should never interrupt Eddie. Stops talking. Like if you're if you're in a relationship with somebody that you don't like, adding an extra person isn't going to make you like that first person. <laughs> Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that. Just 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 digging deep right away, and, and that is fair. Yep. <laughs> um, 
Go ahead. Go on with that, Crystal, and then I'll. If you're I'll... if you're looking into polyamory because you're bored and or just not compatible with the person that you're with, you might just want to forego that step unless you're looking for a quick way to get rid of that extra person. <laughs> yeah, I I have some friends. They um. They said it was polyamory. To me, I thought they were just swapping, but they were a couple. Got involved with another couple, and before you know it, they're divorced. And with one another, it's, it's yeah. it, like it, they need that security blanket to <laughs> ease the transition because they don't want to be alone when they transition. Good they work for it. So that's you know. Let, let me say this. By the way, way doing it. in chat the other day on the live stream, somebody gave relationship advice who claimed to have no relationship advice, and that was in a relationship, communication is essential to make it a collaboration instead of a compromise. And we always hear relationships mm. are a compromise. And I loved that turn of phrase. I collaboration. Yeah. Yes. Go on, Ed. I, I, I hate the term compromise because there's no such thing as, as a compromise. If you're compromising, then neither one of you are getting what you really wanted. Right. So it's not a true relationship. If if you're giving and taking, maybe, then one of you gets what you want and the other one might not. But hopefully next time around, it will be the other way around. But compromise, then nobody's getting what they wanted. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I think with collaboration, that is just a great way to put it. And, and I found it awesome because then you're working together to create something bigger instead of cutting pieces off so somebody's... Compliant? Birdwin says negotiation. Well, I, I think discussion is a better term than negotiation. See, I've had friends who True. said they were polyamorous, and my first thing whenever I've been approached with a polyamorous offer is I need to hear the same offer from your spouse or your other half. Mm. I need to have this conversation with them also, and hopefully with all three of us in the same room. Because... The my wife just says she has to approve of all my toys. <laughs> yeah. Like her. Yeah, <laughs> Teresa's is great. Jules says, we believe that the ground rules are set and acknowledged up front. Yes, we do not mess up other people's relationships. <laughs> Where do I mm -hmm. say Can't just parrot platitudes. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's... I one of the people that had offered me approached me whatever you want to call this um I said no no I'm not interested um even if your husband is comfortable after saying I'd have to have this conversation with him also and what happened next is they actually did get into a polyamorous relationship and divorced a few months later oh wow. and remarried and then got upset when he cheated on her um, hmm. so yeah, if you are a person who has time, time, so important for polyamorous relationships, if you want to sit with one person on the couch and then go have sex and go to sleep, polyamory might be a little too much for your schedule, but if you're willing to do something with both, go out and spend time with one, go out and spend time with the other, it means you want more personal interaction, and that's great. That's fine. But, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not replacing something missing from your relationship. Right. And, two, mm -hmm. you can't treat that third person that comes in. That's assuming that we're talking about, like, a threesome relationship where um, all people are involved with each other. Uh, some polyamorous couples keep their dating lives separate. And this right. person dates these people and this person dates these people. And some right. people like to only date together. Right. And you want to make sure that if you're dating all together, that everybody is getting the amount of attention that they need. That third person also is a person. Yeah. And has needs and feelings and, you know, needs to be emotionally taken care of and stuff too. So. Right. Yeah. So, Ed, when your wife says, I have to approve all your toys, that person that she addressed as a toy 
needs to be comfortable with that place in your life. This is mm. this is fun. This is sex. This is not a you're moving in. We're building a long term permanent trio or smoosh. I've had people. It could be. Well, it could be. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, it's actually true, but. They have to. It just know. depends on it depends on the arrangement that you've got. Right. And every it's... no no two no two are different. No two are the same. <laughs> no, no two are different if you make them sign a contract that's the same as the first one. Yeah, I, I think uh, poly- polyamory, like anything else, it comes in all kinds of forms. I mean, um, there's been a person that's been in our life for probably the entire 15 years that Teresa and I have been together that we suddenly started referring to as the sister wife and it really had nothing to do with sex. It's just the three of us were always together and we really loved each other. So yeah, she became the sister wife. We don't see her as much as we'd like to now, but right. um, we still have a lot of love for her, you know? <clears throat> well, now I'm curious cause Ed has called me brother, but he's never called me brother husband. No. <laughs> it's, or brother wife, just to be clear. <laughs> it's <laughs> we'll just take back and enjoy our vices for a moment while we bask in that glow. Mm. <laughs> basking, basking. That's right. <laughs> so what do you think makes a strong I... what's that? Somebody yes. said something. Crystal, did you say something? Wait, no. no, I said hydrate. Sorry. Oh, hydrate. Okay. <clears throat> so what do you guys think makes a strong polyamorous relationship versus a unhealthy one or healthy versus unhealthy? Let's use those terms, I guess. Um, and we've already touched on a few things, but let's expand on that and give examples. Um I think healthy relationships come from people who are in a good place mentally and um, just personally. So if you have toxic people and you throw them into a relationship, they're still toxic people. Right. So if everybody involved is uh, on the same page or on the same wavelength, then that is a big part of it, I think. Ed? <sighs> Yeah, what she said. <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, going from a couple going into it, um, you you have to. I feel already have a strong relationship. What makes a strong relationship? I I, I don't know. Understanding, not lying, trust. You know all those things that people say make a strong relationship. I mean, what Jewel um, just said: communication is key. Communication is very much the key. I mean, when my wife and I got together, we told each other from the beginning, um, don't cheat on me. And people are going to laugh, you know. Um, I don't care who you with, but don't cheat on me, you know. That And some people don't really understand the difference there. It's like, it's just, don't tell me you're going to be with your girlfriend, in her instance, or me go be with the guys, and you're really slipping out to be with somebody else. Just say, hey, I'm going to go sleep with Joe tonight and that could be either one of us whatever but <laughs> right see and I think that's fair I think so- go hang out with my girlfriend I think something people don't realize is relationships evolve and there are certain keys if you check psychology three years seven years are two big points 12 years is the next one after that if I remember correctly and people expect when you first get into relationship it's frequent sex you're always around each other and then it gets to a point where you're together you're now doing you're you're trying to live a couple's life and a separate life at the same time this is where that communication and collaboration mm-hmm. comes in important oh, yeah. and if you're going to be in a polyamorous relationship you have to work this in on yeah exactly as john just said relationships are like pokemon they evolve three stages yeah, absolutely and that final form is fucking incredible if you could play long enough to get to it. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at, at three years, quite often, yeah. the sex does ease back. The 
passion is gone, but it's replaced with something more. And at seven years, there's another step. And at each point, and yours might differ in time frame, you need to have that communication to go, hey, something has changed. Are we still good? Are we still meeting each other's needs? Do we? Mm -hmm. And then once you evaluate on occasion. Right. Which Andrea mm -hmm. and I, on our anniversary month, that's when we evaluate every year. We sit down and talk about, hey, mm -hmm. Are the chores split evenly? Are we dividing bills equitably? Are we happy with each other? Is that chewing noise really getting to you every time I eat? You know, whatever it is, it's just important to and, Go ahead, Ed. But evolving in what you said, it's, it's important to recognize that people change. Mm -hmm. um, and Hopefully. Good, bad, or indifferent, people change. Um, what they may have enjoyed in my case, 15 years ago, they may not enjoy now. Mm -hmm. So are you mature enough to just to accept that and still say, I love you regardless, or are you going to let that gnaw on you for chewing too loudly in your ear um, yeah. while you're trying Thank to sleep? You. <clears throat> I don't think it necessarily even has to be a bad thing if people reevaluate and say, you know what, this isn't like, this isn't a good fit anymore, you know? Yeah. We're, we're going yeah. in separate directions. If you're, I mean, it's, it's not that it's a bad thing to build your life around your relationship. Mm -hmm. That should be something that's cornerstone and most important, right. you know, or at least have a top priority, but it's not necessarily that you're a bad person or they're a bad person or a bad partner. Mm -hmm. It's just that you might not necessarily be a good fit anymore. And mm -hmm. acknowledging that without any malice kind of gives you a chance to, make those reevaluations without being afraid to say, you know, this, this isn't working. It, right. It's time. From taking each other for granted, knowing that, you know, next year oh, yeah. might be the year that we don't fit anymore. Right. Yeah. And to by not fit, that can mean two things. Yes. That can mean breaking up and, and going your separate ways, or it could mean readjusting. So you're collaborating together again and you're moving towards oh, yeah. a common goal that's why that communication is so fucking essential because if you're not moving forward mm -hmm. together and you're going in opposite directions and even if you have opposite goals it doesn't mean you can't support each other in that and build on that you're going to be cheating on each other before long right one way or another <laughs> or, or ignoring each other which is i don't know yeah. passive cheating yeah. um now, once you add a third mm -hmm. person into that mix, and hello, Drop, good to see you. And by the way, Wordwin says, don't do that terrible movie hey, slash TV them. plot of not talking about something because fear of losing them. Oh, no, if you think you could lose them, <laughs> fucking talk about it. So either A, you lose them quicker and get it over with, or B, and get it over with. There's a chance you could bridge that gap. There's a chance you could communicate. And yeah, it's horribly awkward. It's difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's hard to find where you're both in a mood where you don't have that discussion on an emotional level. Instead, you can have it on an intellectual, logical level. That's horribly hard. But, yeah, it's so essential when you're with one. You're including more mm -hmm. than one. And I say more than one because polyamory, I, like I said, I've known couples who have built a relationship with another couple. So polyamory doesn't necessarily mean three. It means more than two. Oh, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. The funny thing is, you know, John's going back to John's comment, relationships like Pokemon, they evolve is, you know, we said all these things to each other in the beginning of a relationship jokingly. And as things evolved, it's like, hey, we're really doing this. You know, it's it's it evolved. <laughs> right. And Calico says, or deciding to end something because you decide it's better for the other person without talking. Yeah, that's fair, too. Yeah. Oh, they just don't understand. It'll be better if I end it. Well, how do you know if you haven't talked about it? It's, uh, drops and says, uh, well, talking is key always for anything. Absolutely. Communication is key. Um. And that evolution, by the way, might mean something like, oh, I don't like this sex thing we used to do 
or I want to try this sex thing we haven't done or we tried once before. And that might mean another partner. It yeah, baby. Something else. It might mean something that the general public disapproves of. Or it might mean I like missionary. Well, some people are afraid of that because, oh, if we're not doing something crazy. We're just not doing it right. Not necessarily. Or it could just mean I like big butts and I cannot lie. That's true. That's true. It's uh, and John says the amount of insurance coverage is also key. Usually, that's what keeps people together: <laughs> insurance, children, or as a third, pets. Yeah. It's uh, so let's talk about the pros, the healthy part, the what a polyamorous relationship adds to your life. Anybody want to start with this? Okay, I'll start. Um, <laughs> if you have a partner that has very different hobbies than you, I'm not even talking sex at this point in time. Mm. You love bowling, and your partner just doesn't like to bowl. This offers you an opportunity to go do that activity or hobby or interest that your, mm -hmm. I don't know, first partner, for lack of better terminology doesn't really enjoy it can also build that relationship between you and that other partner in the way of you now have somebody else to talk about because we all like to on occasion complain about our other half it happens and it might not be like oh i'm miserable i want to leave them but it could be they did this today now there's also a danger here there's a pitfall because once you have three, you now can team up two against one. And you got to be careful with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you got, Ed? <laughs> Go on. Oh, it's just little things. Nothing, nothing major like watching a television show or something. And you know that the character said one thing and the two of them was like, no, he said this. And... And next thing you know, they're both teaming up. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And two, sometimes if you're getting the same feedback from multiple people, it might be time to listen. That's it gives fair. you another set of eyeballs and ears to, to maybe trust that the person isn't just, you know, being ridiculous when they, when they give you feedback about something. Trust is a good word right there. Because <clears throat> in, in a normal relationship, you have to have trust. And if you don't, Mm -hmm. You need to find a way to trust that person you're with instead of fearing that they're going to do whatever it is that maybe you experience in other relationships. You, they deserve your trust, not your fear of the same shit happening again, which quite often, by the way, here's a quick mm -hmm. piece of relationship advice. If you find every relationship ending the same way, that's you. Your picking partners that are right. the same or doing something that creates that reaction in your partner – you have to look at yourself at that, and that's not accusatory. Yes. That is genuinely I give a damn advice. Look at what you're doing or who you're choosing yes. to be around um, mm -hmm. and, and adjust something in yourself. I'm sorry if that hurts somebody, but, yeah, that shit's on you. Yeah. Yeah. So trust is very important. And being able to trust the other person, which is key because that's us reacting to everything around us, but also being able to instill that trust in your partner or partners so they don't feel like they're being judged against one another, pitted against one another, compared to one another. There is comparisons always. Size matters. Just saying. Um <laughs> But there's also, I like bowling with this one. I like ro watching romantic comedies with this one. And that's a fair mm -hmm. comparison. Because maybe person right. one, fuck bowling. Person two, I really want that sci-fi action adventure. Well, you like both. Mm -hmm. So this is nice. And yeah, you My husband hates horror movies. Say again? Oh, my husband hates horror movies, and so 
I am particularly excited when we find a girl that loves horror movies. It's very <laughs> difficult to find, but once in a while, they're out there. They are. It's I have known quite a few women who just really love cool. horror movies. And I've known others who, horror and, movies are okay, but they will watch a serial killer documentary in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, like, I know one of those. <laughs> yeah, she just pulled up. She'll be inside in a moment. <laughs> I know two of those. <laughs> it's uh. They're pro to the um to the poly thing is that different people have different strengths and weaknesses, and sometimes, uh, like if one person is particularly good at cooking and maybe they don't want to cook all the time, having an extra person mm. in the house that can cook is super fucking nice. Or two dishes. Just nice. And it's like adding that person to the family dynamic and having, you know, a second, um, I don't know, uh, yeah. not a second, a third. <laughs> I don't even feel like I exist. I just, I just, uh, Crystal's like, I just ain't, co- I just ain't cooking. One of you go cook. Do you do dishes at least? Cause that's a valuable skill. If, if somebody likes cooking, doing the dishes, it's, uh, man, though. Having having a third person in the relationship that just splits the workload and the bills and everything, just and even three ways, which it seems to me like the way the economy is, it's just a lot more convenient to exactly. have three people trying to make a household work. Hey. Yeah, that, mm. that's a great concept. Plus boobs. Plus boobs. Boobs make everything better. Well. Yes. Truly, I don't know. We we can go into man boobs and moobs, and discuss, but that's a different show. That's not, that's not. <laughs> Crystal turns away and plays with her um, hookah. Hookah. That's what I want to do. <laughs> so notice we haven't even really touched on sex because sex. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with carrier. Products sold separately. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with carrier. Products sold separately is a whole separate thing. There's so much yeah. more than the sex. And <clears throat> if you just want... It's part of a relationship, but it's definitely not all of it. Right. And if you just want sex, you know what? Be a swinger. Go out. Well, it, okay. Go ahead. What I'm, I'm really going to out myself here because that's how it started right. for us. We dabbled in that lifestyle. And we found that that really wasn't what we were looking for. Right. We wanted relationships. We didn't just want to run out there and have sex. We wanted relationships. Um, yeah, for, for some people, it's really strange, myself and my husband included, to just like go out with somebody and be like, okay, now what? <laughs> How scary is it to try to have sex with somebody that you don't know? Plus like germs and stuff. Right. Like... And crazy people. The germs of the brain. <laughs> It's uh, so yeah, that's something totally separate. And also keep in mind in a polyamorous relationship, as I mentioned earlier, that dynamic will change also with time. So there is that first little bit of woohoo, and then things mellow out, it chills out, it's not all new and exciting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like the sex goes in kind of an arc. It's like scary and everybody's really awkward at first. And then it gets really good as you get to learn about the other person and what everybody likes. And then it kind of, you know, tapers off and evens out. You could just be talking about every episode of Talk of the Tavern. (laughs) So, 
<laughs> Let's talk about long-term benefits of polyamory. And then I also want to talk about how society views it because that's something that's very scary, that judgment of the outside world, let alone approaching oh, yeah. the first time with somebody. It's so long-term benefits. Once you're past three years or five years, and I don't know if either of you, Ed, kind of, yeah, here? Kind of, yeah. I mean, you know, I some people probably wouldn't even define our relationship as a polyamorous relationship, but I, I think it is because, like I said, we we do love each other. You know, we don't spend as much time together as we used to, but we're not forgotten. It's always there, and when we do get to spend time together, it's like, yesterday last time we saw him was yesterday so yeah it's literally or figuratively no we don't share a home together or anything like that because she wants to do her own thing and i admire the hell out of that so yeah it's where the support comes in yeah yeah Yeah. oh yeah no crystal yes Um, me and chris have been together for 16 years well we've been married for 16 years we've been together since high school so i don't count the first couple or whatever because i don't know oh wow (laughs) did we really did we really know each other we were friends for about a year before we started dating and then we dated for two years and then we got married when we were 18. so we've we've been together for a minute um but let's see we got our first actual girlfriend i want to say i want to say our daughter was about two at the time so that was only 13 years ago thereabouts Mm -hmm. um before that we played with other people but it wasn't like relationships it was just like toying with the idea experimenting Mm -hmm. a little bit what ed was talking about um, and then i was like i don't like i don't know i don't like just uh (laughs) hooking up and leaving i i want to with them you know it's like it's like when, when a cute adorable puppy follows you home you don't necessarily want to give it back. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's long term is better for me. He's pretty open to just go with the flow, whatever. And I, I get attached. I get I catch feelings, <laughs> and then I just want them to stay. <laughs> but it's one reason I adore you, Chris. When we first met, shortly thereafter, you mentioned, uh, "Oh, uh, what what was it? Codependent was the word you used." And I'm like, I love codependent friends because then we actually hang out and do things together. It's uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, but it's not necessarily how everybody well, is you wired. Start to need each other. You develop a need for each other. <clears throat> right, and, and, and it's you, nice to be needed. It is, and and you find that niche yeah. that they fit into in your life, and you fit in into their life. It, it is like a best friend <gasps> with benefits. But for realsies, because, um, again, not just referring to sex at this point in time, though that is one of mm-hmm. the things that can be on the table. I don't know. Do you think polyamory can exist without sex? Yeah. You could have, like, a, a sexless, I don't know, I guess that's pretty much, like, how where, where me and my roommate are at right now. Like, we're not attracted to each other at all. She's not attracted to us, but she is absolutely, like, our second wife, like... I take care of her baby. She washes my dishes. One of us will make dinner. We help each other work out finances and plan for stuff. We talk each other down from panic attacks. So that's pretty much my sexless marriage is with my roommate. See, this is this segues into a different topic here where I have told guy friends who are I don't know, mildly homophobic, you can love another guy without wanting to have sex you can say just like somebody you're in love with i really look forward to spending time with them i really want to call them and and tell them about my day and what happened and what's going on and it's okay to want that and enjoy that and, and look forward to that and matter of fact if you don't maybe that's the wrong way if you're scared to do that and and bring somebody into Intimate friend says Jewel, not necessarily having sex. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> there is a value. Yeah, in well, that's here's the funny thing about our second wife. Okay, we haven't had sex, and I won't say it's not out of desire or not wanting to. We're afraid it's going to ruin it. How many times in, have we? 
in my experience, when you have a friend that's that close and you're just like, oh, I don't want to ruin it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can try you can try it out and then it'd be like, no, nah, that was weird. And everybody's like, that was right, weird. Afraid that it's just going to be too damn hard. weird. <laughs> like if you if you have a friendship that that's that's that strong unless everyone or or anyone in the involved is super uh weird about it i guess or feels mm-hmm. feels weird about it then um generally it's just like well that was that was weird and then you move on and your friendship is way more important than feeling awkward around each other you move on and then with six communication years down the road it. you'll be like hey yeah, remember that time <laughs> But you move on with communication about it. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, that was awful. God. Discussing that afterwards is important so nobody feels, continues to feel awkward. That moment can be awkward. Right, right. But the situation, the relationship, everybody needs to have that discussion. So we go, hey, how was that? Well, me too. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Um. We good. Yeah. And two, it has to be okay if maybe one person feels awkward and the other person doesn't feel awkward. Sure. Like, yeah, absolutely. You can, you can have a friendship and be like, man, if you wanted to date me, I'd date you. And that other person would be like, that's so sweet. And be okay with that and not have your ego hurt by the fact that you're into them that way, but they're not necessarily into you that way. I've also. But known... having a partner. Good. Yeah. No, go on. Oh, having a partner so that you don't feel like you're all alone when that happens. Um, it kind of softens the blow a little bit. Like, it's not that you're a completely undesirable person and no one ever wants to be with you or whatever. It's just, that was not a, that was not a good dynamic. The chemistry wasn't right. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had polyamorous friends who, for example, the husband was cool with another guy and the wife was cool with another woman, but the wife had no interest in other women sexually. But the guy was comfortable mm-hmm. with other men sexually. So that's something else to consider. A polyamorous relationship doesn't mean a fully interactive sexual three-way. It can mean yes. sex with three people. Well, hello, Marlene. You have come in at an interesting point in time. Hi, Good to see you. <laughs> but it can mean sex to with the tavern. three people in the interaction, but only one person interacting with both of the others and the other two not interacting right. more than emotionally, not necessarily physically. And that's okay too. Mm-hmm. But what I'm hearing now, Polly, yeah, I, go ahead, Ed. Go ahead. No, please. Me? <laughs> I'm sidetracking. Yeah. There, there was someone else that uh, wanted said she wanted to be in a polygamous relationship with T and I, mm-hmm. when really she and I were the two that had the relationship and she couldn't understand she thought that polyamory meant all three of us was going to hop in the sack and blah, 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 blah. And Ter- Teresa's like, no, go do your thing. Go to dinner. Go do whatever you want to do. Sex, whatever. And I'm doing she laundry. Just really, yeah, she I just really that. couldn't understand that it didn't mean all three of us were going to hop in the sack and get the groove on. And, well, she's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's okay to sexually experiment, but polyamory, breaking the word down, poly means many or more than one, generally many. Amory means love. It doesn't mean fucking a lot of people. That's fucking a lot of people. And that's cool too if that's what you're into. Again, I I will make the clarification right now. In a healthy relationship, that communication so everybody is in the loop. Your other half, mm-hmm. your spouse, your, your partner, whatever, knows what's going on. And very important, that third party knows what's going on. This is whether mm-hmm. it's a one-night fling or whether it's a long-term thing. Um, and Jules says a previous boyfriend code word for he's not interested in sex. I'm flattered. Marlene says, well, a guy being okay with other guys or the lady sounds more like a cuckold. Uh, No, he was interested in men and women. She was just interested in men. She had no interest in women. Now, she didn't mind her husband having another partner, another sexual partner, another (laughs) romantic partner. By the way, Andrea says communication is key. And uh, Jules says polyamory is wrong. 
it's mixing Greek and Latin roots. <laughs> so grammatically wrong is the point. Uh, by the way, I sent Crystal a thing about grammar the other day. <laughs> Synonym rolls. <laughs> Just like grammar used to make. <laughs> I, laughed, I laughed way too hard at that one. <clears throat> and then you shared it. I'm going to step out for one minute. I'll oh, go ahead. That. Yeah, pause yourself. <clears throat> the bottom line from everything we've been saying. Oh, I thought Ed was raising his hand. I had to check for a second. Um, no, 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 no. I'm just waiting for her to come back because I got to step out real fast too. Oh, very good. We don't want to leave Travis by himself <laughs> in the middle. I appreciate that. Um, it's okay to love more than one person. Physically, emotionally, sure. mentally. And there are differences. I love some people that like, oh my God. We don't have a lot in common or intellectually where we can have a deep conversation. Um, Ed and I, mm -hmm. in this context, I could fucking say polyamorous with Ed because I want to call that motherfucker when I've got a problem <laughs> so I can share this problem and get his point of view, even if his point of view is, uh-huh, and? Um, and sometimes that's all it is. Other times Ed is... Uh, yeah, all, all cheering along. Yeah, I get that. I'm with you on that. But it's a beautiful thing to have that person that you can reach out to. So I, I don't want anybody listening to this show and this topic thinking polyamory is about sex. Sex can be part of it. No. But it's not the only part. Not at and all. it's not the biggest part. Now, did we cover... Polyamory, long-term benefits, well enough? Are we good with that? I think so. I think also I want to say just one more thing yeah. is don't be afraid to say if you're feeling insecure. It's a big deal because I think insecure has been painted as like this ugly word. And it's okay to feel insecure about, you know, being afraid to lose the person that you're with or whatever. And if that's a valid feeling that you're having don't be afraid to vocalize that or don't make it don't don't feel like it makes you look bad in any way and that's not just for polyamory by the way that's across the board whether it's with a friend whether it's with your romantic partner your permanent partner your your whatever that is valid now if every week you're reiterating that for the past year that is something you need to work on. You need to look at that's that's you. That's not what your partners are doing. You've got something going on, and you have to find your own worth and your own value and appreciate it in yourself. And some of and too, you can let your insecurity pass. It can it can be a thing where you're just feeling insecure at a specific time, right? And maybe nothing triggers it, which and you get a little extra attention and you feel better and it goes away and you can go back to business as usual. I think we all get that, what you're describing right there at some point in time and regularly, not just like once in your life. But if you always feel that way, that's something you need to explore and look at in yourself. Because, again, maybe it's trust, maybe whatever. And some of us are wired that way. And I get it because heaven knows I have my insecure moments where I need that reassurance. Absolutely. But I want to switch this because we've got about 10 minutes left of the topic before we do the wrap up. Let's talk about kids, children in a polyamorous relationship, mm -hmm. because this is something I, again, I've had polyamorous couples with no kids. I've also known polyamorous couples with mm -hmm. kids. And because of the stigma on this type of lifestyle in our current Western relationship, we're not even going to explore the other continents and how they feel about these things. What about the children? Yeah, well, let's talk about that because that is valid. It... <laughs> um. And I can't speak with authority on this one because though I've had friends who have had long-term polyamorous live-in relationships, I don't think I've actually discussed with them how I handle their kids. The kids know this third person is around, and I believe they know that third person goes into their parents' bedroom. 
Andrea. It's says, like they know that you have. They know that they have two parents, and they know that the parents go into the bedroom. Right. <laughs> Nobody right. wants to picture their parents doing stuff with each other. They Andrea feel about says, the same with the third person involved. I think kids aren't always considered, and that could be a problem. So, what about kids? When kids are in the picture, it changes things in a couple ways. Thoughts, anyone? Um, I mean, let's see. So with our first girlfriend that we had live with us, I mean, when you don't have someone living with you, it's pretty easy to just say, hey, this is our friend, you know, yeah. because you have friends and it doesn't really affect anything. It starts to kind of change when that person lives with you and they live in your room. Like it's time to go to bed and everybody goes to bed in the same room, kind of a, kind of a situation, or at least I thought that it would be different, but my daughter just kind of thought that that's just how things work, you know? Oh, it's bedtime. Mm -hmm. There's a bed in your room, and there's a bed in my room. You guys sleep in there, and we sleep in here. Um, and when it came to dates, sometimes, you know, dad would go out with our roommate, mm -hmm. <laughs> friend, whatever, and sometimes I would go out with her, and sometimes dad and I would go out together. And there, were, all she knew was that there was always somebody that was there to stay home with her and play shoots and ladders, which was <laughs> great. You know, um, one of our girlfriends uh, had a tattoo of angel wings on her back, and when she would give piggyback rides, my daughter called her her step Pegasus because she was the horsey that had wings out of the three of us. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And so, and two, um, one of our girlfriends had kids and one didn't. So the one that didn't, she was the fun one that, you know, was <laughs> very less, a lot less parental that let them get away with everything. And then the one that has kids was a little bit more maternal, like set rules and boundaries and, you know, was a little bit more of an authority figure. And, uh, I, I mean, just like how no two relationships are alike. There's going to be no two relationships alike with that extra person and your kids or that yeah. person and their kids with you. And hopefully everybody gets along because if they don't, then that really sucks. And I don't know how that would work. Now, Ed, I want your feedback on this. I want your thoughts on this, but I want sure. to read a couple comments first. Gordwin says, is that if it's a healthy relationship for the adults, it should be for the children, I think. And kids will adapt and figure out how they can best take advantage of the situation the little disease factories are all about leverage that's fair marlene <laughs> yeah. says what did you call her in Accurate. front of the child how do you her name <laughs> you... yeah we just we just called uh oh mm -hmm. come on oh um and i mean i've introduced her as my girlfriend before or my roommate or whatever the case was at the time, but for the most part, we just referred to her by her name. We called each other babe or honey or sweetie or whatever, but we called, you know, all of us call each other that. It didn't really seem that much different than just having a friend that lived in the house that also slept in our room. So yeah. she didn't even, my daughter didn't even actually understand that we were dating people until maybe two years ago. <laughs> She's 15. <laughs> no, that's fair because and, you don't look at yeah, it. Yeah, she was would... like, she was. Mm -hmm. She was talking about polyamory, and and I can't even remember exactly how the conversation went. And I was like, well, I mean, it's not that weird, because we had a girlfriend you didn't seem to mind. And she was like, what? I was like, this person and this person? Like, never, it never seemed to bother you. And she was like, you guys were together? And I was like, oh my gosh, you oblivious little child. Like, we held hands. We cuddled on the couch. We spooned in bed and made breakfast together with our arms around each other okay, but crystal, yeah. i'm very uh, curious apparently i'm just over how did it whatever, feel so it wasn't that different i'm very curious crystal how did it feel coming out to your child <laughs> i mean we weren't really hiding it in the first place so it didn't feel like coming out it was just kind of she just suddenly noticed Right. Or it, it came onto her radar or something and uh, it, it suddenly became a thing in her world that like, she went uh, oh, that, oh, hey. Right. Um, <laughs> until last year, she thought that the bed restraints on our bed were for, uh, to keep me from sleepwalking. I and, love it. <laughs> yeah. And so I figured we should probably have that talk because 
yeah. she was telling her friend how funny it was that I sleepwalk and I actually need to like tie myself to the bed. I'm like, please don't tell people that. Please don't tell people that. And she's like, why? Why? And I'm like, okay, I got to come clean. I lied to you about something. <laughs> By the way, so maybe just don't mention this at all. Couple, she was mortified. That was awful. Couple comments. Andrea says, with kids, they may not understand how to react when their friends ask, which very much relates to what you're saying. And Marlene says, how mm -hmm. do you handle departure of one of those res relationships, especially if they lived in the house? Um, I mean, my daughter felt really sad when our uh, when one of our girlfriends left because they were really close but she got a good a, a good job opportunity across the country and it was just you know it was just time and she wasn't uh she wasn't getting all that she needed from life right where we were at you know and she wanted to pursue her own path and her own journey and so that just happens sometimes sometimes people come into your life and they go out we're still good yeah. friends to this day talk That's all the time yeah and um our other girlfriend that had kids, that was a little bit easier because the rivalry between my daughter and her oldest daughter was just, oh my God, it was so bad. <laughs> um, but it was, it was more like, oh my God, I've got the house to myself again. And it was a relief for her. So it just, uh, it depends on each individual relationship for different people. It's yeah. going to be easier. And for some people it's going to be a little bit harder and there's going to be some tears. So it just happens. Now, Ed, we have totally skipped over you on a bunch of stuff here. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to give you a what chance. What you want to know? Huh? What you want to know? <laughs> Any of this stuff. Um, well, with kids and all kids that? Kids with me, Good. you know, T and I don't have children. Right. Now, um, our sister wife does have kids. Right. And there really hasn't been any explanation, I, I, I don't think, to her children. Um because for her, it was simply, well, I'm going to spend the weekend with Ed and T. I mean, we we were close friends. So that's what she told her kids. When we all would hang out together, whether it's camping or whatever, um, there re really wasn't anything to give a clue, unless you were an adult, to give a clue that there was a relationship there. So I don't think she really had to actually explain anything to her children. Now, they're old enough now to be watching this show, so I probably just outed her if they can figure out who it is. But <laughs> well, here's oh, what I'll say. Oh, boy. From yeah, I think that's what most people don't realize is that probably people don't have a sex swing chilling in their living room. Like, we're just, we, we do things in private just like everyone else does for the most part. Right. So what I'm hearing from all this is relationships when they're established especially they're seamless they're a part of your life they blend in they they fit into your world and the kids mm -hmm. until they're mm -hmm. looking as set at sex as a topic they're exploring it's not mm -hmm. even on their radar or concern and it's no different yeah. from a roommate or an aunt or an uncle in the house right. And again, that person's interaction with the kids depends on their level of paternal instinct or experience, and so on. So, or if they're just going to be the fun auntie that brings candy all the time. I got gum. The person we were most concerned about was her mother, not not the children. It, it was her mother. Oh, okay. Well, let's take a couple minutes and explore that. Family, <laughs> outside of your house, do they know? Mm-hmm. Some of mine do. Not all of them. Just once. I thought. doubt that they would ever watch this show, but if they if they do, they would be. I guess they'd probably be like, "Oh, well, that explains some things." <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. I don't think our viewing audience expands to everybody's family. Ed, um, my husband's family—they all know. They've known for many, many years because. He just came out and told his freaking mom just nonchalantly. And she was just like, oh, my God, you guys are gross. And that was pretty much the extent of it. And she never brought it up again. Was it all just and like, occasionally hey, she'd mom, be like, is that your girlfriend or is that your roommate? I'm banging her. But... I'm banging her. <laughs> <laughs> Cha-ching, baby. My mother-in-law 
used to go, um, I think that you should go back to doing the dishes because your girlfriend, she doesn't know how to do the dishes right. <laughs> okay, well, that's a fair thing. <laughs> Take that as the approval. Uh, <laughs> none, of, none of my family know. No. We just recently went to the beach with uh, T's family, her, her sister and her niece. And T did make the comment one day, you know, they're going to start asking questions if you keep saying honey, baby, and sweetie to her. <laughs> I don't think they will. And if that happens, you just got to be ready to answer, man. I think most people you will have avoid United things front, feel so You know if you're going to lie or if you're going to come clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so it's time to wrap up this episode. Anybody have any closing or final thoughts? Um, love whenever you can, man. And yeah. as long as as long as everybody's happy, then more power to you. Ed, and I'll drink to that. That's yeah, a great yeah, closing I'll toast right to there. That. Okay, Ed, you good with that then? Yeah, love the one you with, no matter who many how many it is. Now, my closing thoughts on this, <clears throat> any relationship, especially the types we've just been discussing, but whether it's with your kid, your parents, co-workers, communication is key, okay? You don't have to be a jerk about it, but expressing what you want, what you expect, and who you are is very important. Again, by a jerk, I'm not saying throw things in people's face, whatever aspect, going so much further out than polyamory right now. But that communication, as I opened with, and I'm just loving this phrase, communication is key, collaboration, not compromise. Okay. I like that. Um, here, here to that. And Wordwin says, to love is to be happy with. There we go. Now, we're going to get a Cogsley quote for our closing toast, though you already did a great one. Oh, there we go. Doesn't relate, but art is about cosmic beauty. Science is about cosmic order. Religion is about cosmic purpose. That comes from a textbook, Conceptual Integrated Science, by Paul G. Hewitt, Pearson Education Incorporated, which was one of my college science textbooks, and I just love that quote. There we go. Let's get out of here. Here's the closing stuff, folks. We'll catch you again soon. Before we go, I want to remind everyone that you can email us at talkthetavernshow at gmail.com to let us know your thoughts on the show's topic, suggest another topic that you'd like to hear us discuss, or just have us read a message out on air to someone in your life. Thanks for supporting the show by downloading the podcast, sharing it on social media, grabbing some shirt stickers and mugs from bit.ly slash tavern merch, or barware patches and hats from bit.ly slash tavern merch too. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash tavern merch or tavern merch and the number two. Thanks to everyone who joined us live at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk and everyone who supports the tavern by subscribing, hosting, throwing bits, raids, and most of all, commenting. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night. holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday.
Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with Carrier. Products sold separately. 